common in regression modeling to have to select a subset of the available predictors. And computer output will give you various tools to help you do that. So the most common uh, thing that you see in output for regression is the R squared value, which is a useful summary of the model, but it's not actually useful for selecting predictors. So what is the R squared value? Well, it's equal to the square of the correlation between what you see and what you predicted. So a high R squared value will gonna suggest that you've got close predictions to what actually occurred, sometimes called the coefficient of determination. There's a number of ways to compute it. Uh, in addition to squaring the correlation of the actuals and the fitted values. Another way is using this equation here, which when you write it like this, you can see that it's the ratio between the variation in the data, uh, so the variation amongst the fitted values to the variation in the data. So the top line here says how varied the fitted values are and the, and the denominator is how varied the data is. So if you've if you explain a lot of the variation in the data, then this is going to be close to one. But it's a useful summary, but it's not actually useful for selecting predictors because if you try to maximize R squared, you'll end up with the biggest possible model. All of the possible predictors go into it. The reason for that is it doesn't allow for the degrees of freedom. It doesn't allow for uh, the extra coefficients that might be attached to not very useful predictors. And so adding any variable tends to increase the value of R squared, even if that variable is irrelevant to the problem. So for that reason, people came up with the idea of an adjusted R squared, which adjusts for the number of terms in the model. And it can be computed like this. Looks a little bit messy, but you can see that this term on over here, um, if you add extra predictors, and then the denominator is going to get smaller. So that's going to be a um, larger than one. Uh, and then you multiply that by one minus R squared, um, and that'll penalize for extra predictors. And then one minus that gives you the adjusted R squared. Um, it's actually equivalent. If you maximize the adjusted R squared, it's actually equivalent to minimizing the unbiased estimate of the residual variance where you just sum the squared residuals and divide by t minus k minus one. And so for a while that became sort of a way that people use to select predictors, but it's also not the best way to do it. Uh, in the 1970s, the Japanese statistician Akaiki came up with this way of doing it, which is now called the AIC, uh, where it's minus twice the log likelihood of the, of the model uh, plus two times k plus two, where k is the number of predictors. And this penalizes terms more heavily than adjusted R squared. So minimizing the AIC will generally end up with a model uh, either the same or smaller than the one you would get if you maximize adjusted R squared. But the reason that this is particularly good for forecasting is that minimizing the AIC is asymptotically equivalent to minimizing the mean squared error by a leave one out cross validation. So we've, we've seen uh, time series cross validation before, uh, but in the regression context, leave one out cross validation is the uh, more interesting measure and minimizing the AIC is asymptotically equivalent to that. Uh, and that makes it a really useful thing to do if you want to choose predictors to get good forecasts. Uh, after Akaiki, some other people came along and came up with a corrected version of it, which works better for smaller samples. And so we tend to use this one these days, the AICC. And it just adds this extra term in, um, which uh, if T is very large, this term becomes negligible. And so the AICC is the same as the AIC asymptotically. Uh, so we're going to try to minimize the AICC statistic when we choose a model. There's another statistic that is sometimes used called the BIC, uh, where, which has even stronger penalties. Uh, so as you add more terms to the model, they're penalized more strongly uh, with a multiple as by the log of t, log of the, of the length of the series, natural logarithms. Uh, that's sometimes also called SBIC, 
the Schwartz Bayesian information criterion or just Schwartz criterion. And it turns out that minimizing BIC is asymptotically equivalent to another type of cross-validation where you leave a certain number of observations out and that number of observations given by that expression. The BIC tends to be popular uh, in econometrics in particular because if you minimize the BIC, then it's asymptotically will lead you to the correct model, assuming there is a correct model of the form you're looking at. That's not so interesting in forecasting because we're not, we don't believe the data comes from a correct model that comes from some complicated real world phenomena. And all we want to do is to predict it accurately. So the AIC is a much better measure for, ac for forecast accuracy than the BIC. Uh, also, the nice thing about uh, leave one out cross validation in the regression context is that it's really, really fast to compute because you can do it in one go. Uh, so conceptually, you're leaving one observation out of the test set and use the remaining observation to fit. And you would think that means you have to fit you know, n dif uh, t different models where t is the number of observations. But it turns out that there's a fast way of doing that computation that you only need to fit once to all the data and you can compute what the leave one out cross validation statistic would be. So tradition, if we have a training and a test set, it looks like that, where you fit models to the blue data and you test on the orange data. Time series cross validation, we do this, where you fit models to the blue data and you predict the orange data. Leave one out cross validation looks like this, where you fit models to the blue data and you predict the orange data. You're just leaving one out at a time. So you're sometimes using, well, you, you're often using future data to predict past data. But in the regression context, that's okay. And uh, you should get a good result. So when we talk about the CV statistic, the cross validation statistic, that's actually the mean squared error on these test sets. So we average the squared error on across those orange observations. So how do you choose? There's, there's a couple of ways we could choose regression variables. We could fit all of the possible regression models using one or more of the predictors, and then we would pick the best model based on how well it it is, um, how well the, the models predict using something like CV or AIC or AICC. These are all asymptotically equivalent to each other. Um, so minimizing the AIC or minimizing the AICC or minimizing the CV asymptotically will lead us to the same model. The problem with this strategy is that there's too many models to compare. If there's a large number of predictors, it's just not possible to fit all of the possible regression models. And, and it blows up very quickly. For example, if you've only got 50 predictors, which is not a huge number of predictors in a, in a regression context, that can lead to over one quadrillion possible models, which you're never going to fit them all. So we need an alternative strategy. So one strategy that people use is called backward stepwise regression, where you start with a model containing all of the variables and you keep removing one variable at a time and keeping the model if it has a lower CV statistic or a lower AICC statistic, and you stop if you can no longer improve. And that, while it's not guaranteed to give you the best model, will often lead to a good model. I should note at this point that any type of selection of predictors means that you can't then look at the p-values of the coefficients or do the usual sort of statistical inference uh, because the process of variable selection invalidates the assumptions behind those tests. So when we're using variable selection for forecasting, you shouldn't also then look at the p-values or do, do um, statistical inference on the fitted model uh, because that will be misleading, whichever of these tools we're using. Okay, let's go back to a, a problem we looked at in the last section where we were doing harmonic regression on Australian cafe turnover. And we had a few different models that we fitted, and now we can look at how well they work using the AICC statistic or, or, or some of the other statistics. So here's, here's what we fitted. Last time we fitted these six models, 
uh, using increasing number of Fourier terms. And what we're going to do is to uh, then use the glance function to compute various summary statistics. So we've got the R squared, the adjusted R squared, the CV statistic, and the AICC statistic. And you can see that for the last few models, at least, the R squared and the adjusted R squared are indistinguishable to three decimal places. The AICC statistic, the fifth model is best, slightly better than the sixth model. And then the CV statistic also, the fifth model is best, it's slightly better than the sixth model. So that tells us that we should be using five Fourier, pairs of Fourier terms when we fit this model, which means we're gonna use 10 coefficients uh, to uh, describe the seasonality. Let's look at those models again. These are the same graphs we saw in the previous section, but now we've added the AICC statistic. So that's minus 1085, minus 1099, it's getting better, minus 1160. And as we increase K, AICC statistic is decreasing. There it's minimized. And if we add one more pair, it gets worse and the shape doesn't change much. So the extra parameter is not working. And that gives us the best model for this particular um, set of predictors. So what we're going to use in this chapter is either the AICC statistic or the CV statistic. We're going to minimize it to select the best set of predictors. But always remember that once you've done that, you can use the model for forecasting, but you can't use the model for statistical inference.